few years ago, I was in a new situation. I had just got married. My wife had just got a job offer from the United States, a job offer that she accepted. At the same time, I started a new company. You can imagine, new company, new products, no existing customers. That is a situation when I knew something that I had never known before within business. I had a situation called cash flow limitation, or in other words, liquidity challenge. In other words, I was broke. I had no money. And go figure, before that, I used to work for Google, you know, wearing the Google cap and all nice and fancy. And suddenly you realize, I'm in my mid-30s and I have no money. I felt like a failure. Then a friend of mine called me. He, too, had started in a, in a new company, event production company. And they had an event on smart cities. And my friend was responsible producer for this event. So he asked me if I could come and moderate this event. I was like, cash flow, yes. And then my friend goes, and yeah, uh, there's another thing. This event, the budget is blown out. We have no money. I was like, yeah, okay, now you've got a problem. And then we got phone calls back and forth. And due to my situation, zero euros on the account, I was like, okay, I will do it. But I even told my friend, I'm going to do it for, for half the price of the going rate. I'm not going to do it because you're a nice guy. You are, but that's not the reason. I do it because I have to. Uh, I took a, we were living in, in Boston with my wife. She was coaching there. I took the cheapest flight, which took me to London Heathrow for seven hours. You know, lounge life. Yes. Then I flew to Helsinki. The next day we had the Smart City event. It went great, really nice event. After that, there was a cocktail event. We had beers. And it was fall time. And my friend had been volunteering for many years for one of the biggest startup events in Europe, Slush. And, and he said that he's going to join for one final year there. And I said, hey, if someone gets sick or anything, you need a moderator, let me know. And he was like, ah, I think we got everything sorted out. But thanks anyway. And I was like, I'm never going to hear from him again. Lo and behold, two weeks before Slush, I get an email. Hi, auntie. Could you please come and, and moderate an event? I was like, yeah, absolutely happy to. Volunteering, good cause. What's the event about? Artificial intelligence. I said, I'm perfect. I know nothing of artificial intelligence, neither do most of the people, so I'm good. I had two weeks time to learn the ropes of, of artificial intelligence, what it is really about. And at that point, we ended up to slush. It's me there with the longer hair, with startup founders, from various companies. So these are companies that are really making artificial intelligence happen. And at the same time, after this, I was working as a country manager of a tech company. So I, I met a lot of business decision makers. And when I started to show them what machine learning was able to do that day, like no promises, no, if this goes well, then we have, no, what was the reality? In the most kindest words, I can tell you that their knowledge of artificial intelligence and machine learning was, there was some variance. Some knew something, most knew nothing. I mean, people who are in business, especially in corporations, their days are filled with meetings, and then they even have to do the work. So I didn't wonder, but at the same time, I was thinking, how can I help these people? Especially in Finland, because I mean, we're a small language area, and I had few ideas. Maybe it'll be a blog, or maybe I'll, I'll do a YouTube channel. Who knows? I forgot it. Everyday things came, so I did nothing. Until the second Sunday in June. I told you that, that my wife is a coach, and, and she used to be a competitive athlete in, in synchronized skating, team skating. 
their family lived up, up in the north. Four times a week, her dad drove her to practice. Two hours one way when she did her homework, two hours back when she slept. Thus, my wife still today possesses a superpower. When we leave from our country home, our cottage, and we get to the main road, roughly three to four minutes, my wife says, honey, do you mind if I take a nap? And she's out. So I've listened to most of the tech podcasts that exist. If you need any help, I'm happy to help. This time, it was about data centers. And data centers are humongous energy eaters. They, they use a lot of energy. How energy saving was done before was that you took like four or five people, data center architecture, statisticians, best of their breed, like best of the best of the best. You put them into a data center for maybe three weeks. They come up with a pilot. The result, 0.8% savings. Whoosh. They open microbrewery beers and everybody's happy. Because they're, they're the best on planet. People who were into artificial intelligence were really interested about this. It's, it's a big thing. The, the amount of data is so much more than ever before. What they did, and I'm cutting corners here, they put artificial intelligence on the task of saving energy. Within three days, they were able to achieve 15%, 1-5% net savings. Humans, less than 1%. And when the team turned off the artificial intelligence solution, the energy consumption went back to the base level. I was driving my car and I, I knew I have to do something. There were still probably 10 minutes back home. When my wife woke up, I parked the car, I said, honey, I need to write a book. And she was like, okay, maybe you have to. Uh, I went to the book from point of not knowing. I asked a lot of questions. The book later, when it got published, became a bestseller, and I got into many roles within artificial intelligence. My topic today is humans and machines. Go back to the very first point of the story. The reason I went to the event to be a moderator for Smart Cities was that I was broke. Had I had 5,000 euros on my company's account, I would have told my friend, I'm not coming. The serendipity, the chance that happens. There is no artificial intelligence storytelling program that could do all these things. We are human. Chance, faith, whatever you call it, is around us. But at the same time, machines are here. Machines are with us. I'm not going to do a quiz or raise of hands, but normally if I ask people, how many phone numbers do you remember by heart, just out of memory? And today, it's somewhere between my own and, and there are some crazy people who say 10. But, but most are like uh, my significant others. What I'm telling you, you are already cyborgs. You have externalized your memory to a machine. And it has no artificial intelligence, no special things, but you have externalized yourself to it. One of my favorite examples is this. This is a Coca-Cola machine at a US movie theater. What's special about it is that it has 150 different flavors of soda. I'm not saying that's needed for the world, but that's the way it is. The thing is, yes, that is a soda machine if you go to the cinema, but for Coca-Cola company, this is a data collector. Every time people put a cup, or I think the, the biggest cup is 2.1 liters, and there's always a free refill. When they put a cup and they pour their drink, on average we're average. We they take our cup of Fanta and we go to the movies. Then there are teenagers who take eight different types of soda. How do we know? Because we know every cup, but everything people mixed into those cups. Latest figure that Coca-Cola has given out is 14 million data points every day. If I, if I tell this number to start, startup entrepreneurs, they go like this, oh, 14 million, it's a lot. They wish to have that amount of data. 
The thing is, the company is able to analyze, able to understand better how customers use the products or service. If you buy the bottles at a supermarket, you just buy the bottles. Here you can mix whatever. And not only that, movies are produced mainly by Hollywood. Hollywood doesn't make great stories. They're a business. They do something that suits certain audience. They know that this will suit certain age people who like these pop stars, whatnot. So, when you combine what drinks, because we know that drinks are poured out at 15 to 7 minutes before the movie starts. We know which movie goes. We know how long people stay there because of our mobile data and the location. Combining all these, we start to understand behavior. We start to understand our customers better. There is no human being who could be doing this. Machines are a lot better. Let's go from drinks to bread. Bread has been here for thousands of years. The first baking machine was invented more than 100 years ago. But it was Matsushita in Japan in the 80s that was inventing a machine that you could have at home. They had one problem. They had all the right ingredients, but the machine, the bread was always flat. And it was Nonaka and Takeuchi who went to, to figure out what happened. They couldn't figure that out. What they did, they went back to the master baker and said, can you please show what you're doing? And they saw how the master baker took the duff and they realized they have to change something. They had asked many times the baker, but he was not able to tell what he was doing. This is called the paradox of Polanyi by, by the mathematician Michael Polanyi. We know more than we're able to tell. We don't know why we do things, how we do it. This is how I do it. We are special in a way that a machine has very difficult to understand, especially context. And then again, what you see here is a medical scan imaging of a liver and pointing out the cells that have cancer has been done one of the best doctors, which of course is a machine in this case. Okay, now, should we be worried for physicians and, and doctors that they'll be out of work? Absolutely not. They have place to work with the human connection. Figure the situation when someone gets diagnosed with cancer. This is only the medical part. This is essential, this has to be done. But if machines are able to help here, take the workload, we're able to meet each other as human beings. And the impact goes everywhere. Grip strength is a good indicator for certain neural diseases. So if your grip st strength is less and less, it might be that at an older age you're, you're getting sick. If you have to go to a different, I don't know, the, the county hospital or something to do a, a grip strength test, grab it. That's extra, you have to do it. Uh, people, we're often lazy, let's face it. We don't do it. Two British gentlemen figured out to do it in a water kettle. So every time, because in Great Britain many people drink tea, elderly people drink tea when, when they're at home. So every time a person grabs the water kettle, we get a result, a metric. And now, think of it, it's non-intrusive, you don't have to do anything extra, and we can figure out what's happening. If everything goes well, or, I mean, person has a disease, but we're able to, to catch that earlier, they can stay home for a longer period of time, get a better quality of life. So what? I'm asking you to be like these two guys. I'm not asking you to shoot each other. I'm asking you to be professionals. Best professionals in the future, future being today, are good at being humans and they know how to utilize machines to be at their best. What can machines do for you, no matter 
if you go into research, if you go into business, you have to understand how machines work. You have to be there. It's not something that you can go to the IT department, give them pizza and Coca-Cola, and the results come. You have to understand. Nothing is more important than the ethics. And ethics, my friends, is not a sticker that you put afterwards. Now we have AI with ethics. Ethics comes from the get-go. You have to understand how these things work, how machines learn, what is bias in data. It is your responsibility. Be like these two gentlemen. They trusted their product so much that they were shooting each other with live bullets. Again, don't shoot each other. But be as certain that you know how machines can help you so that you can be more you, more you, more you, more you. My name is Antti Merilehto. Thank you so much.